Um, Tom, I guess so what, um, where, how do you see the state of, play, state of play at quarterback so far? What do you like individually about what you've seen from Connor and from Jack? Yeah, I would say uh, continuing to compete. Uh, that hasn't changed. Uh, that will continue. I uh, have our first scrimmage coming up here on Friday, um, and uh, I think that will be – uh, pretty telling for us to be able to get the, the feedback we're trying to get. But from a daily basis, you know, we're just continuing to install, you know, our system on both sides. And so that process continues. And uh, you just see, you know, you know, flashes from both guys to be able to, to, to run the offense with a, with a commanding mindset, uh, to be able to make all the throws we need to make within it. And you think about, you know, uh, Jack, uh, just so competitive, um, such, such a great preparer, um, and is just really doing a good job of, of just learning, you know, where to, where to get his eyes, where to make the throws, uh, running the system, you know, and from a holistic perspective, I think is really, I'm seeing growth there, which is what you want. And uh, being able to move the football, you know, down the field, you know, as we move through camp, we get more and more what we call move the ball periods, which is just playing real football. It's not scripted. Uh, the situations are, um, you know, basically you start at a certain point, and whether it's for the minus 30, minus 40, two minute, plus 25, if you're going in to, to red zone focus, just be able to move the football and, and run the offense. And then with Connor, to me, um, just continues to, you know, I love just the quick release ability to, um, you know, I, I think you see, you're seeing the growth in the, the mastery of the system. Obviously, he hasn't been here as long uh, but uh, as Jack, but the uh, bottom line is, is that uh, just – Throwing catchable balls, I think one thing that sticks out to me about Connor, just being able to throw a catchable ball, you know, that uh, um, is is really the key. I mean, it's, it's completions are what you're looking for. We, we're charting all that and everything from completion percentage to accuracy to whether it's drops or whatever to, to be able to get a fair assessment of where guys are at. So um, definitely – both of them, you know, and when you have a competition like this, you know, you don't have one guy that's always addressing the team. They're both doing that in their settings and when, when practice is over. And I think that's a good balance there. And guys are learning to look to see, you know, for, to those guys to be those leaders in those situations. So um, see progress without question. But like I said, that to me, you know, really anxious to see the first scrimmage. That to me is really where you'll get the most amount of reps of just pure, you know, playing football and have the all the officials here and the full setup. We had a, a, a miniature version of that yesterday, um, very controlled. Only did that for one period, but but uh, went full bore live yesterday during that one period and continue to build off of those reps, and that's kind of the progression we're on right now. Hey, Coach, how are you? Good, buddy. How are you? Uh, good, sir. Um, I asked uh, Coach Bell, uh, with – all the changes, you've got new names in the running backs room and the quarterbacks room uh, at, at the OC position, um, lots of change there. The decision to kind of do everything under the radar, uh, obviously some of that intended, I'm assuming, to keep uh, Illinois in the dark since they're the first game. But how much of that was for that reason? How much is it that makes it easier for you guys to determine uh, what you have to decide between these two quarterbacks and all of that? I think there's multiple reasons. Uh, the most and most obvious is who our first opponent is, you know, um, and, uh, you know, that goes all the way back to, to the spring, you know, and, and that whole evaluation process and how you, you know, and just I just know the process we go through as a staff and what we're looking for and what we can use to try and find information out. So, yeah, there's, there's multiple reasons, but that is the number one. And uh, I just think that uh, I just know as a, a defensive minded person, uh, when there's those question marks there, it, it creates uh, multiple options that you have to prepare for, uh, which detracts from the focus that you really want to have. And there's just a lot of unknowns, you know, and so obviously it works both directions. You know, we, we have unknowns as well uh, without playing a game um, against anybody before that first opportunity. And they, they do have a chance to play. So, yeah, it's very driven by that. So people may not like it. It doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I just so we're going to do the whole goal is what we feel is best for our team. And we feel that's the best for our team, and, and we're going to stick with it. All right, Tom, we've seen Greg do All right. Uh, hi, uh, I understand Donovan came to you about switching to receiver. I get that. Is something like that completely his choice? Uh, quarterback seems like a major position. Plus, it will decide, nah, yeah. I'm done. I'm wondering if you push back on the back. Yeah, it wasn't like, nah, kind of, a, it wasn't I'm done kind of a thing. I think it's a fair question. Uh, he did come to me. That's very accurate. Um, but 
I think, uh, and it, no, it's not like, hey, you know, a guy comes to me, I want to spot. I had another kid come to me, other positions, you know, in the you know, last few months about switching. And, and we usually sit down, and as we always do, we have a conversation with, with the staff about it that are affected by that position. Um, and this, in this circumstance, you contact family and talk to them. And uh, I just think that it's, because that is a, a, a major, you know, shifting in a lot of ways. But I will say this, you know, I understood and, and had the feeling as well, you know, such a talented player uh, that you see has an opportunity to really get on the field uh, sooner in, in, a, in, a, in a different role. Uh, and then you have to have to get a big picture view of things and you just try to go through and evaluate that. But there's no doubt it wasn't done quickly or, you know, just a matter of, hey, he came to me and, and he decides I want to do it. So it's automatically just a, a given. I think there was a lot of, of discussions that went into it. It was a very gradual process for us to go through it and just kind of see how um, things played out from that perspective. But even just talking to, you know, others in his, his high school coaches and just different things. So to me, it was very um, uh, not a quick decision by any means, uh, but just trying to find the best way to help him and help our football team uh, maximize our roster. And, and to me, that's what I see from him. And I feel like that that uh, can be a great opportunity for him. I didn't necessarily disagree with him in some of the things he was saying. Uh, and there's no question, you know, you have a position like that, and it does take time and takes a lot of reps. And so I just think that uh, just trying to make the best decision about uh, all involved and, and obviously for him and for our team, and that's what we felt it was. This line of questioning will look stupid. I'm aware of that. But right now, given his recruiting profile, it just feels awfully fast for him to give up on quarterback, and it feels kind of fast for you to let him do that. Yeah, and that's obviously an opinion that you have, and that's fair, and that's okay. And so, um, but, but I think based on, you know, our conversations and, and, and how I feel right now, I feel like that uh, um, it was the best decision to make. And so... You just make those decisions, and you gather all the information that you have, and, and you use your resources for that, and you uh, follow your gut with it, and then you press on and don't look back. Right, Thank you. Hey, Coach, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. We got, uh, we got Sean Shiver yesterday. He made an interesting comment. I asked him about getting the pads on and playing with us and being able to start hitting each other. As, even as a running back, and he said even without pads, his mindset is he's going to put his shoulder into somebody and try to run it over. I guess, what have you seen from him? He's always not a very big guy as far as, as height, but he plays like he's 6'2", 220. I guess, how much do you enjoy that as a coach, and what have you seen from him as far as running back and a guy who doesn't run out of bounds and he tries to run guys over? I love it. Yeah, he's, uh, he's different. You know, he's very compact, uh, very strong, very powerful, uh, but I love his mindset. You know, and I, I think, you know, you take a young man like that, that, you know, obviously he's probably never been ever considered tall. Some guys grow really, you know, fast and they never grow anymore. We've all seen those guys. They were the same grade and sixth grade as they are when they become a junior in high school. But I, I can't imagine that being the case. You know, he's a guy that's probably always been short and uh, um, undersized. And that creates a toughness to him. And we got several guys. Matter of fact, it came up uh, in practice the other day, and I and I called it. We got several guys on our team that I'd put in that category that they they got a special edge about them because of their size, and they've been small their whole lives, and they've had to learn to fight, and they got to be tough, and they got to be physical, and they got to be mean and nasty in their mindset to in order to be able to compete maybe against bigger guys when they were younger, and and that's never left him, and it's made him who he is. He's got a tremendous edge about him, very physical, very tough kid. Brings that. I think he's already infected our entire offense with that mindset. And to me, that's a really big deal to me to be able to have a guy like that and the ability to, um, you know, have a positive impact on this entire team because that, that toughness that you have to have and that mindset, like you said, just trying to run somebody over. Regardless of the thing about him, this is, which is awesome as a coach, is that he also has the ability to make you miss. And that's what he can do really, really well is also. But, but he's not looking for the sideline. You know, he's looking for somebody to physically run over. And uh, you saw it on film. That's what he did and did it in some really, really big games against some really high-caliber opponents. And when I actually talked to some coaches from down that way, that's the first thing they commented on was his power and how much of an a explosive and physical runner that he is as well. So uh, he brings that with his mindset. And as we always say, your mindset drives your expectations and beliefs, and that's the case with, with Sean Shivers for sure. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I wanted to ask about Jalen Lucas. Uh, what stood out to you when you 
first started recruiting him, and, and I know that he was originally committed to Tulane. How did the recruiting process go as far as your side of things and getting him to Miami? Yeah, he's a guy that we, we actually found when we were down uh, doing our camps off campus down in the south. And I uh, got to see him live and in person, and immediately I was just like, wow, uh, this is the kind of guy we've been looking for. And so, as you said, was was committed to Tulane. Uh, but uh, And that was, you know, it's it's far distance for him to come up here without question. So I think that was, you know, a, a big thing we had to overcome without without a doubt. Uh, but the, the thing that stuck out to me was just, you know, just the, the, the twitch, the burst, the acceleration to go from, you know, zero to full speed as, quite, as fast as anybody as I've ever been around and, you know, and, and coaching wise. And so, um, and then just to that be a complete package of a guy that has good ball skills, can catch and is running back and get the ball in space, that, that kind of a player, you know, and just it's just speed you know he's not just quick he's also fast he is our fastest player so that to me is a unique combination sometimes you got a guy that's quicker than he is fast some guys are faster than they are quick and uh, he has the ability to have both now he's he's obviously not a big guy and uh, so that style of play matches that so uh, but those things stuck out to me and then you just get to know him and his family just man just high quality high character does everything right he's been here now with us since January so got a really good good feel for him as a person his character Character and ability for us to count on him and trust him, and and he's just such a, a detailed guy. And he practices so hard, he trains so hard, and does everything you ask him to do. And he's and he's really thick, he's got really thick legs, and and that allows us to be able to you know to be able to play him and get him the football and allow him to be able to make a guy miss, yes, but also break tackles with his power. So uh, very special athlete. Excited about him and anxious to be able to get him going in our offense. Mike and Keegan. Yeah, coach, I want to ask, you know, with Taiwan being back 100% this year and then Jalen on the other side there, what, what does their presence do for you and your confidence as a defensive play caller? If they're on top of their games, I mean, does that allow you to be more exotic and take more risks with the other nine on the field? Yeah, there's no question it makes a difference, you know, and, and, and that was a, a thing that really, really hurt us last year, you know, with, with, with losing Taiwan for so much of the season and uh, then just being able to, you know, not really have the depth, had some injuries further behind them that even caused even more issues with that. Uh, and then Jalen played a ton of snaps, so his his fatigue and, and just the wear and tear became a real negative for him. So, yeah, there's no question, you know, having both those guys are very, very talented players and you know, even the new coaches have come in on offensive commented pretty quickly about their talent level, you know, compared to what they've seen in, in years past other places. And so uh, they're just really two really good football players. And they're not just talented in regards to physical skills. Yes, they're fast and they're tough and they tackle well and they defend well, but, but they got a really good football IQ. A lot of football moxie and savvy to them, and understand the game, and understand how how to position themselves and set things up, and and uh, it's hard to coach that. You know, it's uh, the instinctive things that, that guys have to them about the game of football and understanding it. Uh, they have, and that really makes and, that, and that's probably the biggest thing I think that helps you do some extra stuff. And so, just trying to maximize their skill set, trying to maximize the skill set of our team, and we've got some new guys that come in that are younger that they have a lot of link to them to be a good complement to what those guys do well so uh, excited about that position and think we got a chance to to really you know be a group that uh, can be one of our strengths all right keegan and then we'll wrap up with jill, wrap up with jill. My turn. hey coach mm-hmm. uh continuing with jalen lucas do you kind of see his freshman year as a developmental year or is his talent just too much to c- kind of deny him a healthy role in the offense yeah I, I would say um i don't see it as a developmental year you know, I, I just want to be able to get him involved and, and uh, be able to be a variable for us in, in, in different ways. And so, um, yeah, you never know kind of how it plays itself out. You know, we've done this, you know, enough to know that. But but he's one of those freshmen that you look at and just say, you know what, he's a guy that that uh, has a skill set, you know, because speed is speed. Even if it's young speed, uh, it's still there. And uh, I think that to me is it's what sticks out in the ability to, to make plays in space and want to be able to do a good job of that, you know. So, hey, yeah. I, I do see him as a guy that, that we uh, expect to play as a freshman. Right, go ahead, Joe. Last one. Mm. Coach uh, A.J. Barner could have a special season, no question about it. Can you address, though, from a local standpoint, what you've seen in Aaron Steinfeld, James Bamba as backups mm-hmm. right now, where they're headed in the intense play that they've brought out of spring into fall? 
yeah, I think that's uh, um, really excited about those two guys, two young players of ours in that tight end room. Uh, love both their mindsets. Uh, I think, uh, you know, James Bomba is a big big individual and I love uh, his ability to kind of he does everything in, in a good way you know he's very, he's solid at everything you know he's able to block for us and and catch and, and run routes and and he's just a dependable guy that we trust and he's earned that trust and so to me I, I feel like that uh, you know I have high expectations for James to be able to 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 be in that role and he's competing to be that next second and third guy in the game for us and it's the same with Aaron you know Aaron's ball skills are really special and that's definitely his strength uh, very good route runner um, and I don't know if I've ever seen him hardly drop the ball, you know, and, and, and live goes extremely talented in that area, which has been good. Uh, needs to continue to get stronger and bigger and, and, and more physical in those things, and that's the things we're working on, you know. And so, and James is obviously, you know, his strength is more of his size and physicality, and, and he's continuing to work on his, his pass game comp components. So, I think between the two of those guys, you, you find two high character young men that uh, uh, you know will do everything they're asked to do, they'll be where they're supposed to be, and those kind of guys improve they get better you know they they're able to um, address their, their areas that, that we, we say hey this is something you got to work on they work their tails off on that and they continue to allow their strengths to be their strengths so uh, we need those guys both to step up without question definitely a young room and AJ yes is a very talented player and we expect him to have a, a really good season and uh, but you got to have more than one and uh, we like to use more than one tight end as well and so those two guys those two local guys we expect to be a big part of that you're welcome. Have a great day, Elio.